Hi everyone, our names are Bella, Alex, Josh, and Tiana, and we are all P3 students. Today we're going to be presenting about common drug food interactions. So for our objectives, we will discuss drug and food interactions and their significance. We will list common drug and food interactions and identify a pharmacist's role in patient education on these interactions and areas of intervention, as well as recognize valuable resources on drug and food interactions. What is a drug-food interaction? This is when nutrients in our food affect a drug's activity. So it can increase or decrease the activity, it can change how much of the drug is able to be effective in your body, and it can also alter how a drug is absorbed, distributed, and processed for use or metabolized and then expelled from your body. And this applies to both prescription and over-the-counter drugs, including vitamins, herbs, supplements, and beverages. Now that we've discussed what drug-food interactions are, let's go over why they're important. These interactions can impact how, a, how effective a drug is, or its efficacy, by increasing or decreasing the metabolism of this drug. Increased metabolism can increase the clearance of the drug and re result in lower concentrations of the drug in the body. Decreasing metabolism can cause high levels of drug to accumulate in the body, which can cause adverse effects and, well, toxicity. This is a major drug safety concern. It should be noted that these drug food interactions can vary in severity, but generally increase the risk of adverse outcomes, uh, increase the incidence of suboptimal sub therapy, can cause adverse drug reactions, and increase healthcare costs overall. There's also very limited research in this area. Some examples of more serious drug food interactions include benzodiazepines and alcohol, vitamin K and warfarin, and grapefruit juice and more drugs than you'd expect, actually. Benzodiazepines and alcohol both act on the same receptor and, as such, have a synergistic depressant effect in the central nervous system. Warfarin is an anti-vitamin K agent. Adding vitamin K uh, to your diet or consuming excess vitamin K can actually increase the levels of warfarin and leave patients at increased risk of bleeding. Grapefruit juice interacts with some drugs, most notably statins and nifedipine and as such should be looked out for whenever a patient is starting a new drug. A quick overview of the food and drug interactions we will be talking about. We'll be talking about warfarin and vitamin K containing foods, monoamine oxidase inhibitors and tyramine containing foods, acetaminophen and alcohol, statins and grapefruit juice, antibiotics and calcium containing foods, and digoxin and licorice. Now that we've gone through a short overview of some common drug food interactions, let's get into the mechanisms and the real meat and potatoes of these interactions. The first drug food interaction we're going to talk about is between warfarin and vitamin K. Warfarin is an anticoagulant, also referred to as a vitamin K antagonist. It is used to prevent blood clots from forming. Warfarin is also used in patients with deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism and is used to help prevent strokes. Vitamin K is an important vitamin that helps blood clot and prevents bleeding. It is found in foods like kale, spinach, broccoli, and other green leafy vegetables. The interaction between warfarin and vitamin K is that vitamin K promotes blood clotting while warfarin works to stop blood clotting. Therefore, if a patient has an increased vitamin K, intake, their warfarin may not be as effective in helping prevent blood clots. Therefore, the recommendation for the patient is to inform the primary care provider of any significant dietary changes. Their primary care provider may then adjust their warfarin dose. It is important to note that while the interaction between warfarin and vitamin K is significant, it does not mean that the patient has to eliminate all vitamin K containing foods from their diet. On this slide, I've included a table that shows 10 foods that are highest in vitamin K, as well as how much vitamin K they have in relation to the recommended daily value. MAOIs and tyramine-containing foods. 
MAOIs are monoamine oxidase inhibitors. They include drugs such as isocarboxazid and selegiline. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors are antidepressants. And tyramine is an amino acid that helps regulate blood pressure. It occurs naturally in the body and is, in, is found in certain foods. Foods such as matured cheese, cured meats like salami, yogurt, pickled, or fermented foods. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors block the enzyme monoamine oxidase. Now this enzyme breaks down excess tyramine in the body. Blocking this enzyme is what helps relieve the depression. But if you take a monoamine oxidase inhibitor and eat high tyramine foods, then tyramine can quickly reach dangerous levels and cause a spike in blood pressure. This tyramine triggers the nerve cells to release a hormone called norepinephrine, which it ends up increasing the blood pressure and the heart rate. Severely increased blood pressure and heart rate can harm your heart and body and even require emergency treatment. So we recommend that you avoid consuming foods that are high in tyramine and continue to follow a low tyramine diet even a few weeks after you stop taking this medication. Acetaminophen and alcohol. Acetaminophen is part of a drug class known as analgesics, pain relievers, and antipyretics, fever reducers. The foods that alcohol are in, beverages that contain alcohol. The interaction between these two is that both acetaminophen and alcohol are processed in the liver and require glutathione to neutralize their toxic effects. Glutathione is a substance in the liver that prevents damage from these toxins. But over time, heavy drinking can deplete your body of its stored glutathione, so there won't be that substance to prevent damage from your toxins, and this can severely damage the liver. So we recommend that you do not drink more than the recommended number of alcoholic beverages per day, so one drink for women and two for men, and avoid daily doses of more than 4,000 milligrams of acetaminophen. Grapefruit juice and statins. Statins block a substance in the body that the body needs to make cholesterol, which in turn lowers overall cholesterol levels. Some statins have more of an effect with grapefruit juice than others. A few of the statins that have a greater effect are atorvastatin, lovastatin, and simvastatin. And of course, the food here in question is grapefruit juice. So the interaction is that grapefruit juice contains furanocumarins, which are compounds that prevent statins from being metabolized or broken down by enzymes. Metabolism, or the processing of the drug, is slowed, and this can make the drug accumulate in the body and cause side effects. Since this drug is more powerful, so are the side effects. The more juice you have, the more you are increasing your risk of side effects, such as fatigue, muscle aches, and damage to your muscle cells. So we recommend that you avoid taking your pills with grapefruit juice and talk to your doctor about switching to a different statin that's less affected by grapefruit juice, like fluvastatin, pravastatin, or rosuvastatin. Antibiotics and calcium-rich foods. Antibiotics such as tetracycline, doxycycline, and ciprofloxacin can have an interaction with the calcium-rich foods. These foods include milk, yogurt, and cheese. The interaction here is that the antibiotics may bind to the calcium in these foods and form a substance in the body that the body is unable to absorb. These drugs need to be absorbed in the GI tract to be effective. With less of the drug being absorbed, the patient won't get their full effect and may not cure their infection. So we recommend that after you have taken your medication, wait up to three hours before you consume any calcium-rich foods. Lastly, we're going to talk about the interaction between digoxin and licorice. Digoxin is a cardiac glycoside. It is a fairly old drug, and it is used primarily to treat heart failure and certain types of irregular heartbeats. Licorice, as we all may know, is a common ingredient in candy, soft drinks, and teas. Licorice is also available as a natural supplement and it is believed that it can be used to treat problems such as heartburn, acid reflux, hot flashes, coughs, and bacterial and viral infections. The interaction between digoxin and licorice 
is that licorice can decrease potassium levels in the body, which then can increase the effects of digoxin and cause digoxin toxicity. This can then lead to an irregular heartbeat. This interaction is particularly dangerous because patients who are taking digoxin already have some level of compromised cardiac function. And by affecting a patient's heart rhythm, this interaction can be potentially fatal. Therefore, the recommendation is that due to the severity, licorice should be avoided while patients are taking digoxin. So how can we avoid these drug and food interactions? As a medical professional, we need to always be aware of common interactions, especially those associated with common drugs and foods, and we need to educate our patients. It's important to always counsel our patients to always read their drug labels carefully, to learn about the warnings for the drugs they take, to keep medications in their original containers, to keep them identifiable from each other, to check with a doctor or a pharmacist before taking an over-the-counter drug if they're taking any other prescription medications, to use one pharmacy for all of their drug needs, that way all the information is in the same database, to inform all healthcare professionals about all the medications and supplements that they are taking, and to keep a record of all prescription drugs, over-the-counter drugs, and dietary supplements, including herbs that they take. And we need to tell them to try to keep this list with them at all times, especially when they are going to a medical appointment. Here we've compiled a reliable list of resources that can be used by pharmacists and other healthcare professionals regarding information on drug-food interactions. The first resource is a drugs package insert, which is always a reliable source of information on any drug. The second resource is drug databases such as LexiComp or Micromedx, which often have specific sections devoted to drug food or drug drug interactions. The third resource is primary literature, such as journal articles or studies, which detail firsthand accounts and also provide professional opinion regarding drug food interactions. In addition, we've created a list of resources for patients to use if they have questions about drug food interactions. Naturally, the first resource and best resource for patients to use is their primary care provider or pharmacist. A patient's doctor and pharmacist have the best understanding of a patient's condition and the medications they take. Therefore, they'll be able to give the best advice specifically tailored for the patient. We've also found a list of online resources that are helpful. However, it is important to note that these resources should not replace a doctor or pharmacist professional opinion. The first resource is an Avoid Food Drug Interactions Guide from the National Consumers League and the US FDA. This guide provides a nice overview of various illnesses, common drugs, and how they should be administered. The next resource is a drug interaction checker from drugs.com. This resource provides information on drug food interactions and drug drug interactions. And the last resource that is helpful is a drugs medication guide. These frequently come with drugs dispensed from a pharmacy, but they can also be found online on the US FDA website. We've also included the links to these resources on this slide. So to summarize the key points of this presentation, a patient's diet can have a significant impact on their medication safety and efficacy. Information on food drug interactions is limited, but it is still an important area of patient care and should always be considered. Pharmacists can play a significant role in educating patients on the best way to take their medications in regard to food, such as what to avoid, the proper timing of, of doses, etc. Some food drug interactions may require dose adjustments or may be avoided by separating the drug and food in terms of timing. And some food drug interactions should absolutely be avoided to prevent serious adverse outcomes. 
Here are the resources we used while creating this presentation. If any of you have any questions about these sources or would like a list, uh, please contact Alex. Her contact information will be on the next slide. Thank you very much for your attention. All right, we'd like to thank everyone for tuning into our presentation today. We hope that you've learned some interesting and valuable information regarding drug food interactions. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the email listed on the slide below or to contact the Yukon Student Health Fair. Once again, thank you so much for listening and we hope that everyone continues to stay safe and healthy out there. Thank you.